Hello there. My name is Razo, and I want to welcome you to my channel. I'm the kind of guy that loves making characters as much as I enjoy playing D&D. In this video series, I plan to share some of my favorite builds that I have stored away. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Now the first few builds have been more damage or tank oriented. Today, we're going to go in a different direction and build the kind of character that I usually play when I'm with my friends. A support caster. This particular build is about an ASMR who will do anything to protect those close to him, even if it's something he might regret later. Today, I present to you the Fallen Angel. Got D&D &D Beyond opened up and I'm ready to get to work. Always a friendly reminder, I like to turn on optional class features and customize your origin, although I don't think customize your origin comes into play for this build. Still a good habit to get into. I already told you that we're going to be using ASMR. This version is the one from Monsters of the Multiverse. We have to pick a size for our character. You can be medium or small. It doesn't really make a difference for this particular build. Pick what you want. Today, I'm going to pick a small angel just because. Some things unique about this race is that we have resistance to necrotic and radiant damage. We have dark vision. We have an ability called Healing Hand. As an action, you can touch a creature and roll a number of d4s equal to your proficiency bonus. The creature regains the number of hit points equal to the total rolled. Once you use this trait, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So it's an emergency heal, but not bad for a support character from a race. We get the light cantrip for free. Charisma is our spellcasting modifier for it. And we get Celestial Revelation, which doesn't quite come in until level 3. But we are going to pick Necrotic Shroud. Your eyes become pools of darkness and ghostly flightless wings sprout from your back temporarily. Creatures other than your allies within 10 feet of you that can see you must make a charisma saving throw or become frightened of you until the end of your next turn. Until the transformation ends, once on each of your turns, you can deal extra necrotic damage to one target when you deal damage to it with an attack or a spell. The extra damage equals your proficiency bonus. One thing that's important on all of my support characters that I build, you gotta be doing something when you're not buffing or healing. You gotta be able to do some sort of damage, and this particular ability lets us fear our enemies to keep them away from the people we want to protect, and it allows us to get a little bit of extra damage in at the same time. We picked Necrotic Shroud because it's gonna fit into our story of how our character progresses, and we'll get into that in a little bit. For our background, I'm gonna go with Boros Legionnaire. That's going to give us athletics and intimidation. We don't have a great strength on this character, so I like to pick up athletics if I can to help me jump over stuff. There's plenty of times I see people that have a 10 or an 8 in strength, and they can't even jump over simple obstacles. So this will help us out a little bit. On top of that, this background fits very well with an ASMR. Um, maybe your parents were angels. Um, you're looking to establish justice and peace on the streets. For whatever reason, you're part of this order and you're trying to protect and help people. So not only does it help with the build I'm going for, it just makes a lot of sense. For our ability scores, we're gonna go with the point by method. We're gonna go with a 10 in strength, a 14 in dexterity. Eventually we're gonna get medium armor and that 14 dexterity allows us to add two to our AC. For our constitution, we're going to go with a 13. Our intelligence is going to be a 10. Our wisdom is going to be a 10. Our main stat is going to be charisma, so we're putting it at a 15. And we're going to pump it up even more. For our ability scores, we're going to pick a plus 2 and a plus 1. For the plus 1, we're going to put it in constitution. For the plus 2, we're going to put it in charisma. So that's going to put us out at a 10 strength, a 14 dexterity, a 14 con, a 10 intelligence, a 10 wisdom, and a 17 charisma. Now, if you want to drop one of those 10s to an 8 and bump one of them up to a 12, play around. The important parts are the 14 dexterity, the 14 constitution, and the 17 charisma. For our starting class, we are going to go with Sorcerer. Make sure to go over here and select all these options if your DM allows them because none of these replace other features they just add what you can do. For proficiencies I like to pick Arcana and Religion but you can really pick what you want. 
it just makes a lot of sense for this build. You're an ASMR, so that's kind of religion. You're also a sorcerer, so you're dealing with Arcana. For our origin, we are going to pick Divine Soul. This gives us Divine Magic. Divine Magic says that we can pick cleric spells in addition to sorcerer spells for our spell list. In addition, we can choose the source of our divine power from good, evil, law, chaos, or neutrality. And it gives us a free spell that doesn't count against our spells known. If I'm optimizing, we pick law for bless, but I already said that I'm willing to do whatever it takes to protect my allies, and that's sometimes against the law. So we're going to go with good and pick cure wounds. You can somehow figure out a way to make it work for your character to be law. I would probably go with that. We also gain favor by the gods. Starting at first level, Divine Power guards your destiny. If you fail a saving throw or miss with an attack roll, you can roll 2d4s and add it to the total, possibly changing the outcome. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. Now we get to move on and pick our spells. For our cantrips, you're going to want Guidance. This lets you touch a willing creature, and once before the spell ends, they can roll a d4 and add the number to an ability check of its choice. This is a main staple in every single one of my games. I almost feel naked without having this on a support character. For the damage cantrip, we're going to start out with Sacred Flame. I like to have a, a combination of different spells in my kit. Later on, we're going to pick up an attack roll spell, so for now, I want to pick something that's a saving throw. This one also really fits our build because we're an angel, so why not use Sacred Flame? For the other ones, you can pretty much pick any that you want. Remember, we get light for free. My go-tos are usually Mage Hand, Mending, Message, and Prestidigitation. Really, just pick your favorite. For our first level spells, we're going to pick up Bless. Bless lets you target up to three creatures within range. They add a d4 to attack rolls and saving throws while you're concentrating on the spell. This character's primary focus is to buff his allies. We're going to be ridiculously good at buffing our allies with the spells that we pick. We also have proficiency in constitution saving throws. Decent constitution with a 14. We're going to have a few more tricks up our sleeve later on as the build goes on as well. If you were able to pick up Bless from being Law, then you can go ahead and pick up Absorb Elements. The other spell I'm going to pick up is Healing Word. Because it is the MVP of healing spells, in my opinion. It doesn't heal for a lot, but it heals at range as a bonus action. So you can still do your action in combat, and then as a bonus action, pick up your ally off of the field from 60 feet away. For our second level, we have decided that Sorcerer is not strong enough to protect our allies, and we are going to make a pact. That's right, we are going to go with a warlock don't forget to come over to optional feature manager and select optional features if your dm allows for our otherworldly patron celestial could fit the theme if we're just going to be a goody two shoes but we're a fallen angel so we're going to go with hexblade the first thing hexblade gives us is hexblade's curse as a bonus action we can choose one creature that we can see within 30 feet of us and that target is cursed for a minute this allows us to do extra damage to that target, equal to our proficiency bonus. Anytime we roll a 19 or a 20, we crit. And if the target dies, we gain temporary hit points equal to our Warlock level plus our Charisma modifier, which isn't great, but it's not nothing. We can use this feature once per short rest, so you're going to get varying usage out of this depending on how often your DM lets you short rest. We also pick up Hex Warrior. This is going to make us a little bit beefier. We're going to get proficiency in medium armor, shields, and martial weapons. In addition, whenever we take a long rest, we can pick a weapon we are proficient with that lacks a two-handed weapon property. When we attack with that weapon, we can use our charisma modifier instead of our strength or our dexterity for our attack and damage rolls. Last until our next long rest. At this level, we get to pick two cantrips and two first-level spells. Our first cantrip is going to be Eldritch Blast because it is the bread and butter of Warlock. It is arguably the best attack cantrip in 5th edition. The other cantrip we're going to take is another damaging one. We're going to pick up Booming Blade. We brandish our weapon and make an attack against the creature within 5 feet of us. Keep in mind, this uses our charisma to attack and damage. On hit, the target becomes sheathed in Booming Energy until the 
start of our next turn. If the target will only moves 5 feet or more before then, the target takes 1d8 thunder damage and the spell ends. The damage increases as we get levels like every single cantrip. We're mostly going to pick this up because it's going to combo with something we pick up later in our build if we need to use it. For our first level spells, we are going to pick up Cause Fear, because now we are a big, scary, fallen angel, so fits our theme here. And although it's not a buff on us, a debuff concentration spell on the enemy is still pretty good. If the target fails a Wisdom saving throw, they become frightened until the spell ends, and they can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns. Now, a frightened creature has disadvantage on attack rolls, and they can't move closer to you. If you have to fear something in the back of the skirmish, they can no longer approach closer to you, and you are, in effect, preventing damage. The other spell we're going to pick up is Shield. It is a reaction, and until the start of your next turn, you have a plus 5 bonus to AC, and you cannot take damage from Magic Missile. At level 3, we're going to take another level of Warlock. That's going to give us Eldritch Invocations, and for the first one, you have to pick Agonizing Blast. This is what makes Eldritch Blast so amazing. It lets you add your Charisma modifier to damage when it hits. As you level up, you get to shoot more beams, and every time you hit, you get to add your Charisma modifier to damage on it. So if you hit two times, that's two Charisma modifiers. If you hit three times, that's three. It just keeps getting better. Now, for this second invocation... I like to go with Eldritch Mind. It gives us advantage on our constitution saving throws to maintain concentration on our spells. I said before, the biggest thing we want to do is buff up our allies and then maintain concentration. If we are proficient with constitution saving throws, have a decent constitution, and then we add advantage onto it, it is going to be very hard for us to lose our concentration. Now, if you do want to go with a different route, you can also pick up Beguiling Influence, if you want to have Deception and Persuasion skills. You can pick up Devil Sight, if you want to see in Magical Darkness. You can also pick up Eldritch Sight, if you want to be able to cast Detect Magic at will, without having to cast it as a Ritual spell. For this particular build, I would almost always pick Eldritch Mind. For this level of Warlock, we also get to pick up another first level spell most people that play warlock would suggest hex but we're playing a different breed of warlock i want to use my concentration on buffing my allies so we're going to pick protection from evil and good instead until the spell ends one willing creature you touch is protected against certain types of creatures it can be an aberration celestial elemental fey fiend and undead these come up pretty often and the benefits the spell gives is that when a creature of that type attacks your friend they have disadvantage on attack rolls and the target can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. If they are already in one of those conditions, it has advantage on its next saving throw. Very situational spell, but pretty good to have in your back pocket for when you need it. So at this point in our career, we're hoping to get our hands on some medium armor, a shield, a melee weapon. We want to, if we can, sit back, buff our allies with bless or protection from evil and good, and then blast away with Eldritch Blast. If we find ourselves in melee, we can use Booming Blade. And another option is to use Sacred Flame. Sacred Flame is also good if a target has a higher AC and you're just having difficulty hitting it. Keep in mind, at this level, we also pick up our Celestial Revelation, Necrotic Shroud, which definitely fits the theme here. Maybe we lost our, our wings that we had because of decisions that we made to align ourselves with the Hexblade Warlock. Pretty interesting story. Be creative with it. Make it your own. Now, from here on out, we're just going to pump the rest of our levels into Sorcerer, but I'll still go over what we're going to pick along the way. Our second level of Sorcerer gives us Font of Magic. This gives us sorcery points that we can use to eventually use Meta Magic. We can also use it to regain spell slots, and we gain all of these back when we finish a long rest. You can also sacrifice a spell to gain sorcery points if you need them for whatever reason. Keep in mind, all of these reset when you finish a long rest. 
for the spell we learned at this level, I'm going to go ahead and pick Absorb Elements. It's another reaction like Shield. Whenever we would take Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Thunder damage, we can reduce the damage by half. Now we can also add an extra 1d6 of damage of the same type we just took to our next melee attack. We're not really going to be melee attacking. This is just a way for us to prevent some damage. So it is in essence the same as healing later on, and we're just preventing before it actually happens. At level 3, get our metamagic options, and we are going to pick Twin Spell. When you cast a spell that targets only one creature and doesn't have a range of self, you can spend a number of sorcery points equal to the spell level to target a second creature in range with the same spell. This lets us buff multiple people with protection from good or evil. It lets us heal multiple people with healing word or cure wounds. And it will also let us use any of our buff spells later on that do not target multiple people on multiple people just by adding a sorcery point. This is what makes us amazing at buffing our allies. The other one you can pick up is Quicken Spell. When you cast a spell that has a casting time of one action, you can spend two sorcery points to change the casting time to one bonus action for this casting. This will, in essence, let you cast two sorcery points and buff your allies with Bless, and then use your action to Eldritch Blast. Or if you really want to go ham, you can use two sorcery points to cast Eldritch Blast once, and then as your action, cast it twice. At this level, we also get to pick a second level spell for Sorcerer. I like to add Aid. This spell lets us choose up to three creatures within range and increase their maximum hit points by five. At our next level, we're going to gain a feat. We're going to select Telekinetic. So let us bump up our Charisma to 18. And as a bonus action, you can telekinetically shove one creature you see within 30 feet of you. When you do so, the target must succeed a strength saving throw or be moved five feet towards you or away from you. A creature can willingly fail the save. So what this allows you to do as a bonus action, you can reposition your allies by giving them a helping hand. Or you can push an enemy into somebody's AoE spell. Or you can push an enemy away from you if you need to. Remember when I said that we have Booming Blade and we have a specific reason for it? This is it. Let's say an enemy's right in front of us. We smack him with Booming Blade, and then as our bonus action, we push them back five feet if they fail a strength saving throw, and then we hightail it out of there. If they come running towards us, they proc that extra damage off of Booming Blade. I'm not saying we're going to do it very often, but it is a pretty neat combo for something we're already planning on picking up. Another thing that happens with this spell is we learn Mage Hand. We can cast it without verbal or somatic components, and we can make the hand invisible. And if we know this spell, it increases the range by 30 feet. Well, one interesting thing about this particular level is we gain a, another cantrip. So if you don't already have Mage Hand, pick up Mage Hand at this level. Speaking of spells, let's go take care of that right now. Mage Hand lets you do a lot of really interesting stuff, especially outside of combat from a distance. And we just increase the range of this spell to 60 feet. For our other second level spell, we are going to pick up Lesser Restoration. We can touch a creature and end one disease or one condition afflicting it. The condition can be blinded, deaf, and paralyzed, or poisoned. Keep in mind, we can also use Twin Spell on this sucker. Moving on for our next two levels. We gain a magical guidance. When you make an ability check that fails, you can spend one sorcery point to re-roll the 20, and you must use a new roll, potentially turning a failure into a success. And empower healing. Whenever you are an ally within five feet of you rolls dice to determine the number of hit points a spell restores, you can spend one sorcery point to re-roll any number of those dice once, provided you aren't incapacitated. You can use this feature only once per turn. 
for our third level spells. This is where it gets real good. We are going to pick up haste. Choose a willing creature that you can see within range. Until the spell ends, the target speed is doubled. It gains a plus two bonus to AC. It has advantage on dexterity saving throws and gains an additional attack on each of its turns. That action can be used to only take the attack with one weapon attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object. When the spell ends, the target can't move or take actions until after its next turn as a wave of lethargy sweeps over it. So what do we want to do? Twin spell this bad boy to haste two of our allies while we sit in the back and hopefully don't get hit. But if we do get hit, we're very good at trying to keep our concentration spell up. For our other spell, I'm going to pick up counter spell. As a reaction, we see a creature within 60 feet of us casting a spell. We can attempt to interrupt a creature's process of casting that spell. I can't tell you how many times I've been fireballed and I am mad that I didn't pick up this spell. For the next two levels, we gain we gain ability store increase to max out our charisma to 20. And then we gain some more spells. I'm going to add Revivify. You touch a creature that has been dead within the last minute. The creature returns to life with one hit point. The other one we're going to pick up is Banishment. You attempt to send one creature that you can see within range to another plane of existence. The target must see a charisma saving throw or be banished. If the target is native to the plane of existence you're on, you banish the target to a harmless demiplane. While there, the target is incapacitated. The target remains there until the spell ends, at which point the target reappears in the space it left or the nearest unoccupied space if that space is occupied. If the target is native to a different plane of existence than the one you're on, the target is banished with a faint popping noise, returning to its home plane. If the spell ends before one minute has passed, the target reappears in the space it left or the nearest unoccupied space if the space is unoccupied. Otherwise, the target doesn't return. This is yet another good candidate for Twin Spell. Moving right along, we're going to go over the next four levels. Because we don't gain much other than spell slots and a new meta magic. For the rest of the meta magics along the build, you can just pick your favorite for this particular feat. I like to go with Alert. He's a plus five to our initiative bonus. Our dex isn't great, so this helps us out a lot. Can't be surprised while we're conscious. And creatures don't gain advantage on attack rolls against us as a result of being unseen. For the spells, we're going to come back and we're going to pick up Dispel Magic, Greater Restoration, and Heal. I'm just going to polish off the rest of these levels over here. Finish it off with Sorcerer. At Sorcerer level 14, we get our wings back, or a different pair of wings, however you want to flavor it. And we can summon them as a bonus action to have a fly speed of 30 feet. For our final feat of the build, you could increase your constitution by 2 to further increase your health and your constitution saving throws, or you can find something else. Really just pick your favorite. And our capstone ability for this build is Unearthly Recovery. As a bonus action, when you have fewer than half your hit points remaining, you can regain a number of hit points equal to half your hit point maximum. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. And for our final three spells, we're going to go with Mass Suggestion, Anti-Magic Field, and Mass Heal. So to recap, the point of this character is to buff our allies or debuff our enemies, utilizing Twin Spell Metamagic. You can also heal and you have Empower Healing that you can use your sorcery points for. You can also use sorcery points to get more spells back. While you're buffing and debuffing your enemies, you are going to be using Eldritch Blast with Agonizing Blast to at least provide some sort of damage. I won't say you're going to be the best damage dealer in the world, but you're going to be doing a lot more damage than most support characters. And the build also has some really cool flavor of we start off angelic and then we make a, a pact. And the more we do good, helping our allies further in the cause, you know, we get the chance to earn our wings back. I like the build playstyle. I like the build story. It's one of my favorite builds, and I'm very happy that I was able to share it with you. Thanks for checking out my channel. I hope you come to visit more often.
Don't forget to roll a net 20 on the like and subscribe buttons. And if you want to watch my friends and I play some D&D, check out this playlist. See you next time.